Have you ever wondered how a fan begins working on its own on turning the switch? How electricity is able to rotate the fan? This is done by a device called electric motor. We shall learn all about electric motor in this video. So, electric motor is a rotating device that converts electric energy into mechanical energy. It is an important component of electric fan, refrigerator, mixers and washing machines. Now, let's study the construction of electric motor. So, an electric motor consists of a rectangular coil ABCD made up of insulated copper wire. Second, magnetic field. So, the coil is placed between two poles of magnetic field. As you can see in this diagram. Third, split rings. So, the ends of coils are connected to split rings P and Q. So, split rings is nothing but take a ring and split it into two halves. And split rings are movable. Fourth, brushes. So, there are two brushes X and Y which just touch the split rings. So, consider that this is a split ring and this is a brush. So, split ring is just touching the brush. And split ring can move. But brushes are stationary. Fifth, axle. So, axle is placed between the split rings and provides support to them. And a circuit consisting of a battery and a switch is also connected to the brushes X and Y. Now, let's understand the working of electric motor. So, for this, first let's see the flow of current in a motor. So, current flows from a battery to the brush X, then to the split ring P, then to the coil ABCD, then uh, to the split ring Q and finally to the brush Y. And finally it goes back into the battery. In arm AB of the coil, the current flows from A to B, while in arm CD of the coil, current flows from C to D. So, let's apply Fleming's uh, left hand rule on arm AB and arm CD of the coil. So, applying Fleming's rule on arm AB, we get that current is acting in this direction. R if a magnetic field is in this direction, so the force is acting downwards. So on arm AB, the force acts downwards. While on arm CD, we apply the Fleming's rule, so we get that current is acting in this direction. The uh, magnetic field is acting in this direction, so the force is acting in the upward direction. So on arm CD, force acts upwards. Thus, arm AB moves downwards while arm CD moves upwards and the coil rotates anti-clockwise. So, in this you can see that the coil is rotating anti-clockwise. Now, at half rotation of the coil, the split ring Q makes contact with the brush X and the split ring P makes contact with the brush Y and position of AB and CD arm will also reverse. So, now the flow of current will get reversed. So, the flow of current will be from the brush X to split ring Q to CD arm to AB arm to split ring P and then to brush Y. Now, due to the reversal of current, the direction of force also reverses. So, now if you will try to apply the Fleming's rule, you will get that AB arm is now being pushed upwards and CD arm is now being pushed downwards. Therefore, the coil and axle rotate half a turn more in the same direction, that is in the anticlockwise direction. So now, after two half turns in the anticlockwise direction, we get a full turn in the anticlockwise direction. This process is repeated, giving rise to a continuous rotation of coil and axle. In this way, electrical energy is converted into mechanical energy by the motor. So now, the working of the motor we just saw was a simple electric motor. Now, let's see commercial motors. So, commercial motors use an electromagnet instead of a permanent magnet, a large number of turns of coil and a soft iron core on which the coil is wound. So, the soft iron core per the, plus the coil gives us armature. 
So in commercial motors, a armature is used instead instead of a simple coil. So this was all about this lecture. In the next lecture, we shall discuss about electromagnetic induction and electric generator. Stay tuned.